live in the room. Everybody can hear you. Oh, uh, okay. Also streaming to YouTube. Great. Thank you. Okay. Well, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Linda Lloyd, and I'm the presiding officer and the director of hearings and appeals for the Gaming Control Board, I'm conducting the public input hearing today, addressing the category four casino proposed by SC Gaming Opco LLC to be located in College Township. Before we could begin, if everyone could turn off or to vibrate uh, their cell phones, other electronic devices, so we, we aren't interrupted. The proceeding is being recorded today by a court reporter who's sitting here at the table in the front, um, as well as it is also being recorded by audio and video and being simultaneously streamed live on the board's website. Um, the video will also remain on the board's website for your viewing pleasure if you'd like to go back and, and rewatch today's pr proceedings. Um, and I would like to remind everyone uh, here today that while the Penn Stater is not requiring people to wear a mask, they are requesting that we all do so. However, if you're going to speak and if you're more comfortable taking it off when you speak, um, that's fine. I just ask that you put it back on when you're finished. As the presiding officer, I call this hearing to order. The date is Monday, August 16th, 2012, and the time is four o'clock. The location is the Penn Stater Hotel and Conference Center located at 1215 Innovation Boulevard in State College, Pennsylvania, in College Township. The Pennsylvania Racehorse Development and Gaming Act, as amended at Section 1305.1, created a new category of slot machine licenses referred to as Category 4 licenses. On September 2nd of 2020, SC Gaming Opco won the Category 4 license auction with a winning bid of $10 million dollars 10 million and 101 dollars giving it the opportunity to propose and build a facility within a 15 mile radius of the longitude and latitude coordinates provided with the winning bid college township falls within this proposed radius this public input hearing is being held by the board pursuant to a mandate found in section 1205 d1 of the act that requires a public hearing to be held in the municipality where the licensed facility is proposed to be located prior to the board's consideration of the slot machine application. The purpose of the hearing is to provide the applicant the opportunity to present its plan for a category four casino to the board and the public, and to provide the public the opportunity to express their thoughts and share concerns about the proposed project with the board. This public hearing was advertised on the board's website, announced by the board at public board meetings and advertised in local newspapers. We have all board members present here today, either in person or via Zoom. Six of our members are here and Commissioner Kernodal is on um, with us via Zoom. So the order of today's events will be as follows. SC Gaming will have approximately 45 minutes to make a presentation of their proposed project to us all. And then we will hear from those who have registered to speak today and all registered speakers will be permitted five minutes to speak. Um, I will call uh, witnesses after the presentation um, in order and we will swear you in at that time. However, right now I would like all witnesses for SC Gaming, um, if they could uh, stand to be sworn um, by the court reporter. Now let SC Gaming begin. Good afternoon, Madam Chairman, or Madam Chairwoman, and members uh, of the board. Adrian King here from the Ballard Spar Law Firm, and uh, representing today, um, Mr. Ira Lubert, who was the winning bidder on September 2nd of last year, and his wholly owned uh, business entity, SC Gaming Opco, uh, which he created uh, to submit the application. Mr. Lubert is to my left and also joining us uh, to my right is Eric Pearson uh, and Eric is uh, the executive that 
uh, Mr. Lubert has engaged to run the project, both in the development stage and um, also one, once it becomes licensed and operational. And you'll hear more about Eric's background as well. Um, we're going to keep today's presentation to be uh, short and to the point. Um, as you know, uh, procedure wise, we'll be doing a much more extensive uh, presentation and hearing down the road uh, after we get through the process. And uh, the Bureau of Investigations and Enforcement, the Office of Enforcement Council has a chance to um, re thoroughly review our application. And at that point, as part of that licensing hearing, which um, uh, I suspect will be in Harrisburg, we'll have a much more detailed presentation on the project, which uh, as you can imagine, uh, we're working on very uh, diligently and it, it continues to develop. And so at this point, I'm gonna turn things over to uh, Mr. Lubert and uh, we'll go from there. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Adrian. Madam Chair Smiler and members of the board, good afternoon. My name is Ira Lubert and I'm pleased to appear before you today. As you know, I was the winning bidder in the Gaming Control Board September 20th, September 2nd, 2020 Category 4 license auction. And I'm the sole 100% owner of SC Gaming, the entity that I created to submit my licensing application in this procedure. I'm extremely pleased to have this opportunity to appear before you today and give you an initial overview of the Category 4 casino that I seek to construct at the Nittany Mall in College Township. As you may know, I'm a longtime member of the state college community. I graduated from Penn State in 1973, and since then, State College has always been a place I call home. In the years following my graduation, I have returned to the university and the State College area frequently. Ten years ago, I purchased a residence in State College, and I'm also a State College business and property owner. In addition, I have been an enthusiastic and engaged supporter of the university. I served on the University Board of Trustees for 17 years. Ultimately, I retired from the board on December 31st, 2020, following my service as board chairman. Because of all this, I feel that I know this area pretty well. As you may also be aware, I was the lead partner in a group that developed the Valley Forge Casino Resort. I started that project in the face of the 2008-2009 financial crisis and I put my personal capital squarely behind it to get it done. In fact, I submit that I won that license because I was the only willing applicant to put personal financial resources on the line during a period of significant economic uncertainty. Some might say it was a risky move, but I really believe that adding the category three casino amenity into a declining regional convention center and resort hotel could turn things around and create a new economic driver and job creator in the King of Prussia area. I was right about that. And the Valley Forge Casino property has been one of the most successful in the Commonwealth. As you may know, that property was acquired by Boyd Gaming uh, Corporation in 2018. In some ways, the financial crisis then reminds me of the environment we're in now with the pandemic and concerns about when the pandemic will truly end. But once again, I see an opportunity for the Commonwealth and a local community in need of additional economic engines. As we've all seen, brick and mortar retail shopping has taken its lumps in recent years as internet driven retail commerce has grown now skyrocketed in the age of COVID. Shopping malls in particular have been hit hard and this includes the Nittany Mall. I intend to use the same formula I used in Valley Forge. I believe that the category four casino I intend to construct at the Nittany Mall will reinvigorate the property and, and draw many new businesses to the mall itself and the surrounding area. This in turn will create jobs and help drive the region's economy forward. And with Penn State's immense, immense alumni base and other visitors flooding into the area throughout the year, not just football season, we will provide a new entertainment venue that everyone can enjoy. Thank you for the opportunity to be with you today. At this point, I'm going to ask Eric Pearson to give you a formal presentation about the project. Eric formerly worked with me at Valley Forge Casino, where he served as my CEO and general manager. I'm very happy to have him on my team again, because he knows how to operate casino properties in a successful, responsible fashion. He also knows how casino properties can be good corporate citizens in the communities in which they operate. And that's why I asked Eric to serve as CEO and general manager of the State College Casino, both in the development phase and once it's open. Eric, please proceed. 
Thank you, Ira. Let's see, let me bring up the PowerPoint deck. Let's see. I don't know if we want to if we can bring up the PowerPoint. Oh, there yeah, we go. Here we go. Okay. Good afternoon. Um, uh, real quick, I'm going to run through the uh, the timeline uh, of of our of our application. Uh, although we kind of hit the broad points, so I'll, I'll try and briefly run through that. So, uh, as I, I received on September second, um, Mr. Libert won the Cat Four uh, license auction for ten million one hundred one dollars uh, with a center point. Radius identified uh, in Unionville Borough in Center County. Um, Ira then formed three different uh, LLCs entities to hold and, and own that structure for the proposed casino. Uh, and then we identified the former Macy's department store within the Nittany Mall as our location in College Township, um, which brings us to, to today. Next one here. Uh oh, what did I do? Okay, um, jump here real quick. So uh, this is a quick overview of our proposed location at the Nittany Mall. Uh, so the Nittany Mall is an existing about 550,000 square foot mall facility uh, here in in uh, or in College Township. Um, it has excellent visibility, parking, and access with really easy access to I-99, I-80, and US 322. Uh, you know, we really envision the casino being able to serve as a catalyst for revitalization within the Nittany Mall, which is currently at about 50% uh, occupied. Um, we are engaging in adaptive reuse uh, of the Macy's building. We're using the, the existing structure and that infrastructure with it, which is about 94,000 square feet uh, in size. And the Nittany Mall sits within the larger College Township commercial district with excellent infrastructure and complementary businesses with shopping, retail, and, uh, and dining outlets. Go to the next one. Uh, as part of our application process, we did commission a traffic impact study uh, and to weigh the impact of the casino development on the existing road infrastructure. Uh, as you can see on the slide here, there are six points of access into the casino site, uh, uh, into the Nittany Mall development. Three of those points are signalized, so they're, they're traffic lights, and then three are uh, by stop sign. Um, we require no point of entry access changes or road infrastructure changes uh, for the project. And uh, even if the, uh, with, with the traffic that the casino is proposed to bring in, uh, and even if the mall were to regain 100% occupancy, we are still well below uh, any kind of threshold that would cause any sort of concerns on the infrastructure because of as it's been designed and used for for many decades. This one here. Uh, also, as part of our application process, we commissioned uh, a firm called eConsult uh, to perform a local and economic impact study on the project. Uh, eConsult has been used by numerous casinos uh, for the same purposes of licensing uh, as we've um, gone through the process. So. Uh, one of the elements that eConsult did was worked with uh, department heads of, of several different uh, organizations and municipalities uh, within the municipalities that serve this area, uh, including street maintenance, sanitation, water and sewer, uh, the police department, fire, emergency medical services, the, you know, the local ambulance, ambulance company. Um, and in every single uh, um, uh, aspect here, the impact on these services and infrastructure is, is negligible at best. 
Um, uh, there's no material issue that adding the casino back into where the Macy's used to occupy is going to create any kind of strain on the existing infrastructure uh, that we have locally here. In addition to evaluating the different departments and infrastructure, uh, eConsult also evaluated the uh, potential possible positive impacts on tourism and, and visitation to the area. Um, and some key takeaways from that report are, you know, the regional draw uh, of this of the casino into the market, you know, should really help both in uh, increasing traffic from local folks that come within the region, but also to tap into that larger, uh, you know, the, the big driver that Penn State is bringing in visitors from outside of the area. And uh, we see the casino as definitely adding uh, an aspect of being, creating a much more stickier draw so that when folks do come in to visit, whether that be for events or uh, in, for other things associated with, uh, with Penn State, that um, we can, the local area can retain those tourism and that visitation, those visitation, visitation dollars. Uh, in addition to that, the casino development is expected to have a negligible impact on any capital improvements needed for uh, College Township. Um, however, the tax revenues that will be generated uh, from the, our local share for uh, College Township and for the county um, will be uh, pretty significant. Uh, in addition to evaluating our market impact, uh, eConsult also put efforts into understanding what our what the casino project's impact will be in the short term uh, during our development and construction phase. Uh, we're looking at um, roughly 350 direct FTEs, full-time FTE stands for full-time equivalency, so positions, um, and uh, an additional about 170 indirect FTEs just through the construction uh, phase of the project alone. Um, with uh, total positive impacts to the economy, uh, adding up direct, indirect, and induced uh, measures of being uh, over $73 million to the Commonwealth, supporting over 500 jobs. Uh, and from a uh, income sales and business tax uh, perspective, just during the construction period, we're looking at estimates of over a million dollars in, in tax benefits just during construction, so before we even open. Next slide. Uh, next, I have just a quick overview of the project. Uh, we have a $123 million budget for the project. 40 million of that is directly for uh, Pennsylvania gaming license fees uh, and the associated auction. Uh, the project itself will be 70 or 90, excuse me, 94,000 square feet, um, which will be completed all within a single phase. Um, we're currently looking to use our full complement of 750 slot machines and 30 table games, live tables. Uh, we're including a sports book, a sports themed restaurant and bar, which will have a live entertainment element to it, uh, and a separate quick serve uh, F&B multi outlet area uh, as well. Um, construction is anticipated to take no longer than 12 months once we uh, are able to begin building. Um, Next, I have uh, a few uh, renderings that I'd like to share. Um, you know, the uh, only disclaimer or caveat I'll give is, you know, we are very much actively in the design and development process now. And um, uh, anything that I do show here, I want to say, you know, we may tweak or change as we go along and, and become a little more refined and, and get feedback um, from uh, PGCB staff as well. Um, but this is our uh, the front entrance, the, the main cover drive uh, looking into the into the casino. Next is a, uh, a diagram layout of uh, sort of a, a top-down view of the, of the entire uh, casino facility. The areas shaded in, in red and pink are our gaming-focused areas. Uh, green are our restrooms, and blue is our F&B-focused uh, areas. And then the gray areas is our, our back-of-the-house support uh, administrative spaces. Uh, this rendering here is of our main ca casino pit. Um, it, it's, uh, it's also not a trick of eye. There's not a lot of color uh, yet on these. Our, our finishes are yet to be refined, so some of it is still black and white. We do know that the tabletops will be green, so uh, we've, we've colorized those. Um, but this is our uh, main table game pit. 
and then we go to our next slide. This is our uh, slot area. Next. Uh, this is the uh, casino bar. So this is the uh, bar that will kind of come out a little bit into our uh, general casino space, but it also uh, is adjacent to our uh, sports bar restaurant uh, entertainment facility, which is on the next slide here. Uh, so this is the rendering of the interior of the sports bar restaurant. Uh, from this angle, it's a little bit hard to see, but we do have uh, a setup to have live entertainment, uh, DJs. We can do stand up, you know, smaller acts. It's not a, a massive facility. We're, we're a little over 5,000 square feet, so it's not a major concert hall. But we want to do what we can to be able to provide live entertainment. Uh, which leads me into... Um, uh, a uh, rough summary of our employment opportunities that we're, we're looking forward to offering. Um, we'll have between 350, probably closer to 400 uh, FTEs once the project gets up and running and stabilized. Uh, we're you know, definitely looking to be an employer of choice in the area. Uh, we wanna offer uh, a very competitive um, compensation and benefits package, including paid time off, 401k, medical, dental, vision. Um, uh, this next point, uh, dynamic career growth opportunities. I, I know it's a point and you see a lot of this. For me personally, this is a huge uh, uh, area for me. Um, I started in this business. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a second generation casino employee. Uh, my mother was a cocktail waitress for about 25 years and my dad was a, a hospitality manager. Um, I grew up in this business. I started busing tables in a casino restaurant when I was 16 and have been in this industry ever since. And one of the things that uh, I really love about this business and am excited, we did a lot of this at Valley Forge, and I'm very excited to, to, to do and engage in, in this with this uh, casino opportunity here is uh, the casino entertainment business offers so many great opportunities that you can come in at a, an entry level, line level position and you can work your way up. And it's, I think it's one of those uh, industries which may become more and more rare these days, but you there's real opportunity and, and, and I'm not uh, a rare exception in this. There are many uh, other executives like myself that came in and started working in line level positions. Um, because I took that path personally, it uh, definitely has um, a very, it is very strongly influenced how I manage and how I lead and how I run casino properties. Um, you know, I've always been a strong believer that our greatest resource are, is the staff that we have on hand and growing and developing them and giving them the opportunity to succeed is, uh, is a major thing. I talk about every new higher orientation that, that we do. Um, and, uh, uh, and so I, it's, it's a line on here, but it's a line that I really wanted to emphasize uh, about how we approach running this business. Um, uh, we can go to next. Yeah. Diversity and inclusion. This also is um, uh, something that uh, I is very near and dear to me and, and have seen a lot of success through really focusing on these areas. Um, you know, here, these are our, our statements, which, you know, were very indicative of how we operated at Valley Forge and definitely is guiding the way that um, we approach this project. Uh, embracing and establishing a diverse workforce. Uh, and that's both with the teams that we build at the property and also who we work with in the community. Um, and we really work hard to reflect the, the surrounding community and make sure that uh, we have a very you know, good diverse mix, not just of uh, backgrounds, but outlooks and point of views. And um, uh, I found that you're far more successful having many different voices offering those counterpoints than, than having something very homogenous. I've, I've seen both in action and, and a, a diverse approach is by far, um, not only is it the right thing to do um, as a member of the community, uh, from a business standpoint, by far, it is the most effective way to, to run an operation like this. Um, and, uh, and we definitely, uh, diversity and inclusion is, is at core of what we do. Responsible uh, gaming. I, I can speak for myself personally. I've worked in many different jurisdictions all across the country. I've worked in tribal jurisdictions in Arizona, Idaho, uh, Washington State, and Connecticut. I've worked commercially on the Las Vegas Strip in Nevada. 
um, and in Pennsylvania uh, and in Illinois. And uh, I can tell you uh, from personal experience, there is of all those jurisdictions that I've named and others, um, no one does it better than Pennsylvania. Uh, I think the uh, confluence of uh, our regulators, uh, the Council on Compulsive Gambling of Pennsylvania and the operators in this state um, take this extraordinarily seriously above and beyond any other, not to say I don't want to disparage any other state where I've operated, but uh, we definitely, uh, how we view and how we operate as a normal course as it relates to responsible gaming in Pennsylvania, um, I, I think is, is a standout. And I think that's a, a credit to um, everyone that is here today. Um, but uh, of course, all of our employees are required to receive annual training. Um, on every single piece of collateral that uh, uh, goes externally, there is the 1-800-GAMBLER message. Um, we have, uh, will have uh, uh, ex extensive uh, literature available and support for folks that um, do identify that they may have, have a problem. And uh, the teams have always been very reactive at Valley Forge and, and will definitely be here in, uh, in handling any sort of responsible gaming issues that do come up. But training is, is first and foremost, and, and that is definitely training in a culture of compliance is something that is definitely at the core of what we do. Um, and that is, uh, uh, that's, that's my, my spiel. Um, personally, I'm extraordinarily excited to be here uh, working on bringing this project to life. Uh, I've moved here myself. I, I bought a house in, in, in Belfont just down the road. Um, so I know I'm a transplant, but I definitely, you know, I consider uh, State College my home. And um, uh, I think the, the potential of what we can bring to, to the area, to the Nittany Mall and to the community um, is just fantastic. And uh, I, I get very excited talking about it. So I, I will, I'll stop for now, but, but thank you very much. Thank you, Eric. Uh, as I said, we, we wanted to be efficient and uh, keep it uh, short and sweet. And uh, we're at about 25 minutes. Um, I assure you that uh, we're working very hard uh, on the project. Uh, the schematics that you've seen are, are preliminary. Uh, we are monitoring the market very closely, not only in Pennsylvania, but in other jurisdictions. You've already uh, now have two uh, category four facilities that are open uh, in mall properties. And certainly we're gonna take lessons for those and, and match what they're doing in terms of um, look and feel. Uh, and I, I know uh, that those properties have been very successful to date. And we believe we are going to have uh, the same level of success, if not more, more so here in this, what I would describe as a very dynamic place uh, in the Commonwealth. And as Ira has uh, taught me uh, on, on certain Saturdays in the fall, is uh, the third largest uh, city uh, in, in the Commonwealth. Um, so there's a lot of excitement that we have uh, around that as well. So with that, I'm going to close our presentation. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, and we, um, thanks uh, for the opportunity. We look forward to hearing from the community, the elected officials. Uh, we will listen carefully to what, what they have to say. I'd like to move our PowerPoint into evidence. And uh, if you have any questions for us, naturally, uh, we're, we're here to answer those as well. Okay, we'll mark your PowerPoint as SC Gaming Exhibit 1 and enter that into the record. Um, and it will be a copy will also be posted to the board's website uh, with, along with today's video presentation. So we'll turn to board members. Um, if they have any questions for our presenters, I'll start to my left with um, our chairwoman. Thank you. I just, just a point of clarification, the traffic impact study and the local impact studies, have they been completed? or are they ongoing or? Uh, um, those have been completed uh, as part of the application process. Um, there are full reports uh, that have been prepared. They have been submitted with our application materials. They've also been uh, provided uh, to, um, I know the traffic study has, I believe yep. the, the um, impact study has uh, also the college township. So all that is complete and submitted. And I just, um, as a cautionary note, when Penn State becomes like the third largest populated city, 
I just hope you realize a lot of those people in, in attendance will be underage and will not be permitted into your casino and hopefully you'll have the proper security uh, in place. So to make sure that some of those tailgaters are not getting in who should not be there. I, um, I think I can speak for both um, Ira and Eric, um, obviously having had the experience of developing and, and running very successfully the Valley Forge Casino. Um, very familiar with underage gaming issues and uh, we will be uh, tackling that issue as we always had in the past and will in the future with uh, obviously great enthusiasm and, and everything we need to do because the last thing we want to do is uh, appear in front of you uh, and, um, and be in a, in a bad place. Thank you. Commissioner Dermody. I don't have any questions. Commissioner Logan. Thank you. Um, welcome. Thanks for the, the presentation. Um, as you're not new to the area, uh, Mr. Lubert, um, you certainly will be uh, putting your casino right here. And, and part of what I've tried to do on the board last five years is make sure that um, you uh, and the, the, make sure that the community benefits uh, from it. So I appreciate um, the slide that you have uh, with the uh, construction expenditures and uh, any plan to reach out to uh, local vendors, suppliers, chambers of commerce to make sure they participate uh, in not only the construction uh, portion, but ongoing services for the facility? Yeah, thank you. That's a very good question. Um, not only will the casino be built locally by a local contracting firm, but we will give emphasis to local vendors, both in hiring and ongoing services that they would supply. We did that at Valley Forge. We plan okay. on doing it here as well. Okay. And, and in the same vein, um, your construction or your uh, full-time jobs, um, any job fairs, make sure the locals can participate. Um, again, working with COGS or chambers or yeah, such. We, we plan on having job fairs both for the construction phase as well as the permanent employment of the people. Okay. And uh, I've been on the board for five years, and uh, Mr. Lubert and, and Mr. Pearson, you're going to inherit a problem uh, that for the life of me, I can't understand how we as a board uh, can't solve. Um, I think this past year, we, we have seen uh, all the uh, interested parties uh, starting to row in the same direction meaning the board or enforcement, the casinos, the Pennsylvania State Police, the local police, but we have a problem of um, individuals leaving kids in cars at casinos. It's a huge problem. And by the grace of God, uh, a kid hasn't died yet. Um, every day I think we're gonna get a call uh, to tell us something happened to a child. Um, and it's a problem that I just, for the life of me, can't understand. A couple of years ago, uh, I blamed it on the casinos, uh, saying that they must not have enough enforcement or when somebody walks into one of the facilities uh, or even before they walk into a facility, you get a text, here's $20 free gaming, uh, make sure you use it by four o'clock tomorrow night. And I'm thinking that was the problem and it wasn't the problem. They weren't doing that. Um, but we, we seem to have this problem that's, I, I, the last week I think we've had 12 or so kids left in cars. We had somebody come before us at our last meeting, uh, left a, a, a child in a hotel. It, it was a four-year-old at 3 a.m. The child wandered off, started trying to open up doors in the hotel room. I mean, just the, 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 the problems that could occur with that. I'm not asking for an answer, um, but you need to think about how you're gonna combat that. And if you don't have the answer, again, I'm not asking for you, you need to think about it. Kevin is here, Kevin, um, he's an expert on it. Uh, we have all been dedicated to trying to solve this problem. Uh, like I said, I, I think we're, uh, seem to be rowing in the same direction. Uh, I can't tell from, you know, your third or fourth 
slide where you show the parking, it looks like you're gonna have a pretty concentrated parking lot. So that may be easier uh, to look for kids in cars when they come in. Uh, but it's, it's a difficult problem to solve because sometimes it's two in the morning and the three-year-old's laying on the back seat sleeping uh, or the parents bring them into the hotel and the kid's sleeping and then the kid gets out. So I just implore you just to, to think about it. Um, Adrian has, has seen us and it, 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 we're again at kind of the end of the line here. Our patience has kind of run out on this issue. So um, please think about it. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, and it's definitely something that we share those exact same concerns. I know for, for us and, and for this development specifically, um, you know, uh, we have a, a, a flat lot. That flat lot will be patrolled constantly, 24 hours a day. We will always have external security presence. We have, we'll have surveillance presence on that lot. Um, and because of that, the nature of it, we should be able to uh, keep a very good eye on what's happening out there. Um, but we share those exact same concerns. You, I mean, trust me, as, as an operator and as a father myself, um, uh, we're, we're right there with you. But uh, you know, making sure that everyone is safe and, and uh, uh, is, is, is a very important cornerstone of how we operate. I will turn to my right, Commissioner Mustio. No questions at this time, but I will have some follow up questions once you have a more thorough presentation regarding the issues that Commissioner Logan has presented to you today. Thank you. Commissioner Regan. And our newest commissioner, Commissioner Ralston. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, over. Um, I was saying just one uh, question. Uh, Commissioner Logan spoke on my initial question about community outreach. Um, so thank you for addressing that. Um, but Eric, you spoke on some of the other casinos that you have managed. Um, and just as it pertains to diversity and inclusion, what does success look like? Um, for you or what has it looked like for you in those spaces and how are you looking to address that if this one is open? That's a great question. So success for me, a lot of it, um, uh, when I think we've been doing a good job at that, uh, a lot of it, it's, I view it through engagement. So, you know, uh, A, in how we, you know, what our recruiting process, processes are and onboarding and things like that, but really in, in how our team engages with me and the other members of the management team. Um, uh, and I've worked in, in situations where that wasn't so great and you can feel it. Like, you know, walking through, talk, you know, talking through, talking to employees, talking to the line staff um, uh, in, in situations where it's not so great. You get a lot of people looking at the ground, you get afraid to, to engage and ask questions. Um, and so for me, the easiest way to tell is, is just in how do those everyday interactions go? How does, are people comfortable? Are they com comfortable telling you not only what's going well, but where are our issues? And that's for the whole team. Um, that is for me, the easiest way to gauge in a live tangible manner. Um, we do a lot of things behind the scenes, um, you know, checking ourselves on, you know, um, what are our diversity stats versus the community that we're in and things like that to make sure that we are in line. But um, uh, for me personally, the engagement is that, that biggest tangible measure um, that I've found. Thank you. And Commissioner Kernodal via Zoom, do you have any questions? No, I'm okay right now, thank you. Okay. Well, then that ends the uh, formal presentation part and we will move on to the public comment portion of the hearing. I would like to remind um, all of the speakers that they have five minutes to make their comments and to assist you all um, and to assure you, you all have your five minute time frame. We have a stop light with us today um, that I will start after you introduce yourself. The light will show green. 
Um, when I've started uh, yellow, when you have 45 seconds left and it will turn red and start to screech loudly um, when your time is up. Uh, so that I ask that um, if, you, if you get to the end of your five minutes and the light turns red and beeps that um, you wrap up your comments and so we can move to the next person. And if for some reason you don't finish your comments before the end of your five minutes, um, you certainly um, can submit any remaining comments you might have um, through the board clerk email, uh, which I'll give you at the end of the hearing. So I'd like each speaker to um, begin their remarks by stating their name, um, their township, municipality, where they live, if they're here on behalf of a community group, who that is. Um, I'll call two names. I'll call the person um, who's going to speak and the next person on the list so that they're ready to uh, come up to the podium here in the middle after the, the person before them um, is when they're finished. We're going to swear in by groups. So my first group is a government representative, a district manager for Representative Benninghoff, and I have Eric Bernier from College, College Township. If the three of you are here, can you stand to be sworn? And we'll hear first hear from Senator Jake Corman and um, on deck will be Mark Long. As a former Senate Appropriations Chairman, I had the same timer set up too. So I certainly understand the need for brevity. Uh, I am Senator Jake Corman. I, I, I represent the 34th Senatorial District, which includes all of Center County and in particular College Township. I reside in Bennard Township, a neighboring uh, municipality. Uh, you know, my own uh, views uh, has, have changed over the years uh, as of, of my feelings towards gaming. Uh, in 2003, I was a member of the General Assembly when we passed the, the gaming law, and I was a NOVA. Uh, in those days, it was probably, and I know some of the board members were in the General Assembly at that time, was one of the more divisive issues that we've tackled in Harrisburg. Uh, and the Commonwealth as a whole was mobilized and there was a lot of rallies and so forth uh, on both sides uh, of the issue. Uh, eventually it did pass uh, and I was a no vote, but as this, as this gone on, uh, it's hard to imagine that we can call it anything but a success story. Um, you know, in 2008, I guess the best comparison when we expanded the gaming for the first time from slots to table games, uh, there was not a peep. Uh, really hardly any action compared to what we lived in 2003. And that's because it was a success story. And a lot of the success is because of you uh, and your predecessors. Uh, the fact that we have a highly regulated, highly taxed uh, gaming industry in Pennsylvania, a lot of the things that I was fearful of in 2003, whether it be an uh, increase in crime, whether it be an uh, increase in, in people losing their homes, divorces, things of that nature, all the things that we were concerned about socially, uh, in 2003 didn't materialize. And again, a lot of that is, is thanks to you uh, for the great work that you've done and your predecessors and, and highly regulated and investigating all the applicants to be involved uh, in this industry. Uh, and so uh, it has been a success. And that part of the success is that it's spread out throughout the Commonwealth. It's not just located in Atlantic City or Las Vegas, it's, it's all over the Commonwealth in, in little pockets. And so now when we, I was now majority leader, negotiated the category four legislation was how could we move these out uh, to other places in Pennsylvania who might be interested? And one of the caveats that I put in that legislation that I insisted upon was that a municipality could opt out. Uh, they didn't, if they didn't want a casino in their area, they had the ability to opt out and not be considered. Uh, College Township did not. College Township with the, 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 Nittany Ball have seen its better days, decided that they wanted to uh, entertain uh, this industry. Uh, and so, you know, they decided to opt in and ultimately um, uh, Mr. Lupin and his team has, has chosen College Township. Uh, but another component uh, obviously of the cap fours was that we wanted to build on the success of the category ones and category two and by using the same individuals, uh, by using the people who own licenses already because they already had something at stake in the Commonwealth in gaming. Uh, and so therefore, when they would move out into the other areas, they would bring that same energy industry knowledge to the area, but also would have their own casinos uh, at stake as well. And so therefore, they would be good corporate citizens for these communities. And we started out by just having qualified bidders from, from people who owned or ownership groups of Category 1 and Category 2. 
Uh, and at the time, we thought we, we may get as many as 10 licenses bid out throughout. We've only received five at this point. Uh, but then we expanded it to minority owners, not just minority, not minority in ethnicity, but minority in shares, uh, ownership shares, to allow them to, to bid in this process as well. And that's where, obviously, uh, Mr. Lupert now uh, is um, the winning bidder of, of this community. So um, it's been a strange involvement over the years, but it's been a successful one. Um, and that's why I'm here to lend uh, my support to College Township uh, in their wish. Uh, to have this casino located here to, to support uh, Mr. Lupert and his team. I think his team, the fact that the, they're locals is important uh, because you want, when you're local, you live here, you're raising your families here, you want something nice here. You're not just going to be a sort of a corporate citizen who's just going to build something and leave and, and not really care how it, uh, uh, it operates. Uh, they'll have a tremendous amount of care uh, in how this operates, and that's good for our community. Uh, to, to have that local team uh, as part of this. So we're very excited uh, for uh, the team that he's put together. Again, I'm here to support College Township in their endeavor, and I thank you all for your time. Next, we have Mark Long, the District Manager for Representative Benninghoff, and on deck is Eric Bernier. Good evening. Uh, my name is Mark Long and I'm the district manager for Representative Carrie Benninghoff, uh, who does apologize for not being able to be here uh, to deliver these remarks in person. Um, Representative Benninghoff uh, does represent uh, the 171st legislative district, uh, which is parts of uh, Center County and Mifflin County and represents uh, College Township. Uh, that said, he is fully supportive of this initiative um, and I also want to, on behalf of the representative, uh, echo the comments offered from Senator Corman on the history and the intent of the Gaming Act and its subsequent revisions. Uh, representative Benninghoff is a member of the General Assembly from the inception of gaming in Pennsylvania and its subsequent updates and expansions. He's always believed that the Gaming Act was meant to provide community investment and free enterprise as part of a regulated industry that was help, meant to help Pennsylvania from the state level down to the very neighborhoods in which these entities operate. As it pertains to the most recent updates to the Gaming Act, including the purpose for which we are gathered this evening, there was never any intent by lawmakers to hinder existing or prospective licensees from utilizing all appropriate business tools to develop a great community project. That includes things like debt equity financing, corporate structuring, community partnerships, and any other existing tools. As you are well, well aware, the Nittany Mall, just down the road from our present location, has become more and more vacant as businesses there have made a mass exit. This facility, once a community asset, is no longer drawing people from outside the area. To that end, Representative Benninghoff applauds the effort to repurpose this space and make it more vibrant while finding ways to keep local people employed and our economy moving ahead. The developers of this project have also been very conscientious of the design of this new facility and how it will be incorporated into the existing structure. Ultimately, the gaming industry through facilities like this invest in local projects and initiatives and are supportive of economic growth and development as they themselves make every effort to be good community partners. Representative Benninghoff believes they can have that same positive effect right here in Center County. These facilities provide good family sustaining jobs that have benefits, the opportunity for advancement, and job training which then can be utilized in other potential future enterprises. On top of that, the resultant investment that comes from additional hospitality businesses and other downstream service economy sector jobs will only help grow our local economy and ensure that jobs remain and continue to grow a number. A thriving community needs a diverse economy with multiple types of opportunities. In closing, this major investment by the developers would create a strong anchor tenant for this facility, which would in turn serve as a significant catalyst for economic growth as this mall transforms its purpose. Instead of having this space be vacant and turn into an unused blight, the route that so many such shopping centers have taken in Pennsylvania and even across the country, Representative Benninghoff is glad to see that this community is looking to change that narrative 
by rallying around this project. Our local officials are continually making the effort to seek opportunities which create new jobs and promote growth, not just one business at a time, but by investing in industry that can be an asset for many of our local businesses, business owners, and bring more people back to Center County to stay in our hotels, eat in our restaurants, and shop in our stores. For all these reasons, Representative Benninghoff supports this effort, and we thank you for having us and allowing us to offer these remarks. Good evening. L. Eric Bernier. Yes. College Township. That's it. Uh, <clears throat> good afternoon, Ms. Lloyd. Uh, I am Eric Bernier, Chair of the College Township Council. Uh, I'm here today to offer four points for consideration as you evaluate this application. But before I do that, I want to welcome you and the board uh, to College Township and offer a bit of personal background. I grew up here in State College, have lived in College Township for the last 35 years where I raised my family, and I'm currently retired here, living three quarters of a mile from a proposed casino location. Uh, first point, a bit of background, the Category 4 license application now being considered by the Gaming Commission Board has a deep history in this community, one which I've been personally involved in first as a member of the College Township Planning Commission for 15 years, and then as an elected Township Council member for the past 10 years. In 2006, in response to the passage of Act 71, College Township needed to identify an appropriate location within our zoning districts in preparation for the potential of a gaming establishment. Therefore, we modified our existing commercial zoning ordinance to include several new uses, one of which was gaming establishments. The result was this theoretically viable use added to, as a use by right to a small portion of the township's commercial zoning district, the area around the Nittany Mall. Fast forward to 2017, Act 42 was passed and in December of 2017, College Township Council was tasked with determining if the township would remain an eligible location for the category four license or opt out as Senator Corman referred to as a location willing to accept the license. Second point, why did the township not opt out in 2017? Since we already had gaming establishments as an allowed use in the township and since the portion of the township's commercial zoning district where it would be allowed was restricted to the area of the Nittany Mall, the factors affecting our decision on the opt-out opportunity were different than those playing into the decisions by many of the other municipalities around the state, including almost all of them in this area. Without gaming as an allowed use in those municipalities with zoning, they could have had to allow a casino anywhere within their municipality anywhere within their municipal boundaries. So the opt-out provisions carried a much different impact for them as, than it did for College Township. So looking at the 2006 action in the context of 2017, what we saw was an area of the township that was built to support dense retail commercial development, but was currently in decline. So since the only place a casino could go was in that area, the Nittany Mall area, council saw this as a property specific opportunity for a pro property specific challenge. Accordingly then in 2017, the College Township Council voted unanimously to not opt out. If the township did not have gaming as an allowed use and it could go anywhere in the township like most of the other local municipalities, we may have had a different discussion and may have had made a different decision. The third point is that what council learned recently uh, the referenced impact reports clearly supported the rationale that the 2017 council used to not opt out. To better prepare for this hearing and potentially a land development plan for a gaming establishment at the mall, the five current council members and key township staff visited the Hempfield Township, visited Hempfield Township in March to gauge firsthand the impact of a category four casino recently opened in the former Bonton store at the Greensburg Mall. There we talked to the Hempfield Township staff, elected officials, the Greensburg Mall manager and facility staff, along with the casino general manager while we toured the mall and the, and the casino facility. Their shared experiences to date, along with the current vigorous regulations and state oversight that's been referred to here uh, for these casinos that they must operate under, helped us better understand both the state of and the local impact of a modern category four casino. Lastly, in closing, I'd like everyone here to know that College Township has not hitched its wagon to this casino application. The township is in excellent financial shape and will do just fine with or without a casino. We have taken a multifaceted approach to redevelopment in the Nittany Mall corridor over the last couple of years. We've hired a professional consultant to develop a comprehensive area plan that helped guide us while well, we updated current zoning re regulations, allowed uses and setback requirements in that area to encourage healthy, sustainable redevelopment through the entire corridor. As the mall anchor store, <clears throat> as you can see, much of that effort is beginning to pay off. 
uh, as the mall, as we have new tenants in some of the mall anchor stores and, and, and in some of the empty storefronts in the immediate area. Uh, additionally, Aldi has broken ground for, the new super, for a new supermarket next to the mall, and we just approved conditional use and land development plan for the former Center Daily Times building. In closing, just as the, uh, having said all of that, just as the economic impact study has documented, this gaming use is easily accommodated into the township's existing infrastructure in that area, and based on what we learned in Greensburg, could serve, uh, could serve us well as a complementary piece to the efforts that are already underway in the area. Thank you for your time. That is all of the uh, government representatives I have registered today. Is there any government representative here who thought he or she registered and I did not call your name? Raise your hand. Seeing none, we'll move on to our community groups. Um, Wayne Baumgartner, Polly Welch, Vern Squire, and David Gertis, if you are here, can you stand to be sworn by the court reporter? <coughs> And first up is Wade Baumgartner, followed by Polly Welch. Good afternoon. I'd first like to say congratulations on uh, on the award for the uh, for the bid for this for this area. Uh, I think this is a tremendous opportunity for the area state college. Center County has uh, is a busy area. Uh, I'm here to I stand here in front of you today to represent uh, well over 1,300 union carpenters that we represent in this area. Uh, we do a ton of work in the center county area. So, you know, going back and I heard, uh, I think it was 107, 170 part-time FTEs. Uh, and that's what I'm here to represent. Uh, you know, with all the casinos growth across the state of Pennsylvania, we have partaked in literally every one of them. And uh, I stand here today to hope that that holds true with this casino here locally. Uh, I know we have multiple contractors that are certified and state regulated to, to actually do the work at the casinos. Uh, not only that, I will say with the boom that's been going on in the state college area uh, or in Center County as a whole, uh, it's just been tremendous, obviously with downtown, with the borough, with everything that Penn State uh, does with their construction of things. Um, there's been some acts put into place such as Act 72 and Act 75, which states, you know, to ensure that uh, the workers are legitimately not misclassified, misclassified workers. Uh, and there's been a lot of that going on in the center county. Uh, some contractors are facing some hard times trying to catch up with those regulations. And uh, by utilizing our contractors, that's not an issue. Uh, like I said, you know, we have a lot of certified contractors for this type of work uh, that, that is expected here. So, you know, and with saying that, uh, you know, if there's anything you, you would need from the carpenter's support, uh, we gladly stand behind you on this construction and uh, gladly, you know, throw our hand out for any, any future opportunities that you may be looking for as far as uh, construction related. Thank you. Polly Welch is next with Vern Squire on deck. Good afternoon. Um, as noted, I'm the general manager of the Nittany Mall. Everything I'm going to talk about is, is basically just the potential impact that the possibility of a casino would have in just regards to the Nittany Mall. All of them are positive. As discussed by numerous people, we've endured shifts in the paradigm to an extreme. 10 years ago, we were 100% occupied and didn't even dream that something like this would be possible. Now you factor in um, online shopping, and then you have a pandemic. We've lost a great deal of, of retailers. Um, with all these challenges, you have to think in other ways. And fortunately, the casino gives us an opportunity to think in a different way. Um, one of the positives, there's multiple positives, but one of them being retail opportunity, leasing opportunities. It, with just the hope that something like this comes 
to play. I've had numerous phone calls from people who are interested in leasing, albeit retail, restaurants, um, a multitude of different things. And this is just with an idea or a hope. Um, so I can only imagine that once it's up and running and everything is, is good, that that will help revitalize the Nittany Mall. Um, it also could potentially help the demographic. Right now, those that typically shop at a brick and mortar, their ages are a little older, we'll say 35 and older. The potential of something like this occurring in close proximity would help that demographic lower um, to hopefully bring some more of the students who are, you know, their early to late 20s to start shopping at a brick and mortar again. It will increase foot traffic, it will increase vehicular traffic, all of which the Nittany Mall could, could definitely benefit from. Um, the entire Dale Summit area could benefit from something like this being in place. Um, basically, I'm in 100% support, as is the owners of the Nittany Mall, and we look forward to the future. Thank you. Vern Squire with David or Dave Gertis on deck. Good afternoon. Thank you for allowing some comments. I'm Vern Squire. I'm president and CEO of the CBICC, the Chamber of Business and Industry of Center County. I'll just make some comments here in short. Many of the comments that have been made are on point, so I don't want to repeat too many of them. First of all, I'd like to thank the applicant for taking the energy and, and having the vision in, in a project like this. So thank you for what you're doing. From a, a, um, a, a comment to the, the panel, to the board, the Commit Gaming Commission, we hope you support the authorization um, in this case. Property has been mentioned here today, and it's a, I think really it should be viewed not necessarily as a recovery of the property or a higher and better use, that can be said fairly, but it's an evolutionary use of the property, even a revolutionary use of the property because these facilities don't just appear anywhere. So we appreciate again, the energy behind that. From a jobs perspective, these jobs will be high in number and in quality. And that's one thing in some of our conversations that we've had to be able to stand here today and fairly say this, uh, we've talked with Eric and, and members of the group as to what those job components would look like. So I think that's a measurable thing. And especially in the face of COVID, uh, still, unfortunately, it's not a recovery on the total backside of COVID, but we still have to be thoughtful about how we manipulate and positively manage our economy here. So these jobs are contributory to that. We hear people say something needs to be done with property sometimes. We also say somebody needs to do something about it. Both of those things are happening before us right here today. The area is supportive. We talk about supportive here, I do, in this context of the, there are food and, and um, gasoline and retail options and so forth, but there's a positive economic energy around this location. So it's not isolated, not that that can't work on its own, but in this case, we do have that kind of energy to support this facility. So I think that has to be evaluated as well. The government, College Township is sound. I do a lot of work with them, our group does, and they with us. And so in a collaborative way, we can again stand here and fairly say that the, the college township structure is a good recipient of this type of energy and authorization. This will join other new investments in the area, in the immediate area, in the Dale Summit area. There are other new projects occurring and, and new investment. And again, from just several years ago, this is quite a welcome change and it's emblematic of what can happen when a government unit puts their mind to making the way happen for change. We want to thank you to the group of the community about the chamber or commissioner, I'm sorry, about the chamber involvement. Um, and not only for obvious reasons, but we really do think we can bring something to the table in those discussions. So again, thank you. And again, I want to thank you all as the gaming commission for your positive consideration of this matter. And Dave Gertis. And if I mispronounce names, I apologize. Well, that's right. It is Gertis. <laughs> ah. Correct. Um, I am a resident and a, an employed here in State College. I am the Vice President of Sales and Marketing for the Happy Valley Adventure Bureau, which is the official tourism promotion agency for Center County. 
And on behalf of our president and CEO, Fritz Smith, and the HVAB board of directors, I'm here to express support for the proposed Category 4 casino in the former Macy's site in College Township, Center County. Speaking from a visitor perspective, our travelers want options, a destination that offers a variety of activities to engage in is attractive to both leisure business travelers as well as local residents. The addition of a mini casino to our offerings will assist the HVAB in its efforts to grow leisure traveler visitation, but it also will help with our efforts to attract several other segments, the group tour market, meeting segment, and the amateur sports markets. <clears throat> For the meeting segment, which usually occurs midweek, it gives the attendees an additional activity to engage in when the meeting is over or during a break. When sports tournaments are here, there is often downtime between games and spending a few hours in the casino is a great way to fill some of those hours. We are also particular, ha particularly happy to see the introduction of the casino into our community because of the employment opportunities as already described it will provide. The 350 full-time jobs that will be created as well as the many jobs it will stimulate with suppliers and the spending and the, with the spending these employees will do in the community will be a tremendous economic stimulus for Center County. Hospitality industry is one of the few where someone can start an entry level position and work their way into well paying supervisory and managerial positions without a college degree. Other casinos in the state are filled with stories of employees who started in supporting positions and climbed the management path and now have good family sustaining jobs. This will happen here as well. The HVAB is a 350 member organization. Our partner members in the hospitality community, the hotels, the restaurants, tourism attractions, performing arts venues, marketing firms, et cetera, are enthusiastic about the opportunity to have another exciting partner that they can work with to combine special offers. Providing another reason for visitors to come to Happy Valley means their stay will be longer and they will spend more money. The result will be a more consistent level of business <clears throat> of our existing hotels, restaurants, and retail shops, and more. The proposed casino could also be a catalyst for continued redevelopment of the mall property, as we've already, already heard in the surrounding area. Earlier this year, the HVAB team had the opportunity to meet with casino president and CEO Eric Purse Pearson, who has considerable experience and expertise in the gaming industry. The discussion provided a better understanding of the overall operation of and, and customer for the level of casino staff training requirements, including protocols for identifying and helping problem gamblers and an overall commitment to create a positive entertainment experience for patrons and employees. Those behind the casino project have an expressed desire to be a valuable part of this community for years to come. The pledge reinforces expectations of a well-operated establishment and is essential to the HVA board's support for this project now and moving forward. The Happy Valley Adventure Bureau recognizes and appreciates that a casino will not appeal to every resident. To that end, it will not be a draw for every visitor to Happy Valley. However, we do believe that a professionally and responsibly managed mini casino will provide greater job opportunities to our regional workforce strengthen the local tax base, help revitalize the Nittany Mall, potentially attract new entertainment options to the area and enhance efforts to grow visitation and visitor spending, generating positive impacts for the entire community. From the HVAB to the casino partners, we say, welcome to Happy Valley. Thank you very much. So that is the end of my list of community group speakers. Are there, is there anyone here from a community group that thought they registered? I did not call your name, raise your hand. Seeing no hands, we'll move on to our individuals. Um, John Delosier, Carl Miller, Robert Vernon, and Michael Lee, if you could stand to be sworn by the court reporter.
So first we have John Delosier with Carl Miller on deck. Good evening. My name is John Delosier. I am the managing partner for Nittany Hotel Management here in State College. Uh, we own and operate the Best Western Plus just steps away from the Nittany Mall. Like many who call Happy Valley their home, my business partner, Mr. Bill Nuttall, came to State College as a young college student from a nearby town. And now over 50 years later, he still uh, visits State College uh, at every single uh, home football game and several times throughout the year. Uh, I, I know that I have the opportunity to commute here uh, from my home in York County um, just about every week uh, to uh, manage our hotel staff and oversee uh, our daily operations here. I should note that when I say we own and operate the Best Western Plus here in uh, Center County, um, we, we don't operate it alone. Uh, we developed that particular hotel uh, by partnering with a number of uh, local investors right here in the State College, right here in the Center County area. About 20 individuals that we partnered with to make our development happen about 10 years ago. And I also need to add that we don't operate that property alone, but we do it with our hardworking staff, uh, all of who are local uh, residents here in College Township and in the surrounding townships that come to work uh, each and every day to make sure that our guests uh, experience uh, Happy Valley hospitality at its finest. The dedication of our ownership and our staff, like that of many of my peers, was truly tested uh, the last 18 months, especially at the height of the COVID-19 pandemic. And rest assured, very soon we will join our voices uh, with our competitors and colleagues alike. And we will uh, state very proudly that Happy Valley will uh, indeed come back stronger than ever. This proposed casino uh, will certainly be a major contributor to our recovery as a hospitality industry and as a community. As the commission considers uh, the comments that are offered by the public, I'd like to offer uh, three points that uh, I think are very important in these discussions. Number one, the construction and ongoing operations of the casino will bring a much needed economic boost to our community. When we built our hotel over 10 years ago, we believed we were building in the growth area of College Township. And what we've seen in recent years, especially with the Nittany Mall, is that growth has been somewhat stagnant. We're very encouraged to see the new anchors. Uh, uh, we're, we're very encouraged to see the new construction in the area. And certainly uh, the addition of the casino uh, will be very welcomed. Number two, the ongoing operations of the casino create numerous job opportunities for the area. One question that I get sometimes is, am I not concerned that we may all be competing uh, for the same employees. And no, I'm not concerned. I learned a long time ago in the hospitality industry that a rising tide truly floats all the boats. And as we see our entire industry do better, as we see uh, good employers move into the area, it only strengthens our employment base in the community and in our industry. Number three, the ongoing operations of the casino uh, will provide those of us uh, who promote this area nationally uh, one more attraction to promote. I'll explain that quickly. My company goes throughout the country. We don't encourage people to come stay at our hotel because no one comes to Center County just to stay in a hotel. There's something here for them to do. There's something here for them to see. This casino, casino gives us one more place uh, to promote. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Board, for your time. And thank you to the developer uh, for bringing this exciting project our way.
And Mr. Delosier, if you could just wait a moment. You can just hang for a second. We have a question. Yes, sir. So uh, tell me, you you said you were steps away from the proposed casino. I don't know, Doug or Adrian, can we go back to that slide where? Yes, we are on Shiloh Road, directly across uh, from the sheets. We can can see the uh, Nittany Mall from our location. So if you leave Nittany Mall and travel towards uh, Interstate uh, 99, Mm-hmm. Uh, we the, the mall was always a, a great uh, place for us to send our guests. It was walkable uh, when there was a restaurant at the mall. Uh, so we certainly look forward to that type of uh, destination being there again. Okay, we're going to need to be your partner. You're going to need to be our partner. I don't know if you were here when I said uh, we have a problem with uh, uh, casino patrons leaving kids in cars and hotels. So... Um, You'll need to be our partner. Yes, sir. I did hear that, and Thank we you. will gladly partner with that. Carl Miller with Robert Vernon on deck. Salutations. I'm a longtime citizen of Center County. I live in Belfont, believing in a caring creator, and a moral just God. I'm an advocate for maintaining a healthy Nittany Valley. My friends and colleagues and I practice environmentally, practice daily environmentally justice and support fair housing for working families with Habitat for Humanity of Center County and its restore, as well as aiding our local food pantries and the YMCA's food program and its food bus for needy families and individuals. There are more poor people in Center County than most citizens recognize. A casino will not provide sustenance for the poor underemployed and desperate. On the contrary, casino gambling entices the poor to risk an already inadequate means of support on an exceedingly slim chance of financial gain and denying people the dignity of progress for sweat equity, an honest day's wage for an honest day's work. Obviously, the interest of the casino industry is to make a profit for the executives and investors. So who loses? The community loses its quality of life and the poor experience greater loss. Casinos promote gambling addiction and unhealthy morality. Casinos operate as a reverse Robin Hood mafia, stealing from the poor to feed the hungry, money hungry casino operatives. Casinos masquerade for job producers but with negative results. The well-documented experiences of a legalized gambling industry at Atlantic City is enlightening. The number of unemployed people and the number of people on public assistance remain steady. Of government, the cost of that escalated. Corruption became a major problem and government and private funding for the poor was deleted in need as they were needed for treatment, for compulsive gambling. So who gains? Obviously casinos do not contribute to our values and quality of life. Therefore, I earnestly urge the gambling 
Pennsylvania Gambling Control Board to deny this application. Thank you. Robert Vernon with Michael Lee on deck. Hello, my name is Pat Vernon and uh, I lived here since 1966, came here to go to college. Uh, I've been married 49 years. We've raised two sons and built several homes in the area. I've traveled widely and seen many casinos. I'm a fan of architecture. In 1977, my partners and my wife and I opened a restaurant in Lamont, which is part of College Township, called the Victorian Manor. And uh, this great architect here helped to design it. Um, but one of the obstacles we had was that this was a dry township. So no alcohol was allowed to be sold. Not even state stores were permitted. Not even a club was permitted to have alcohol. So we uh, circulated a petition to get that issue on the ballot. We find out that you can only do that on odd numbered, odd numbered years. And you had to have the number of people who voted in the last presidential election as your goal for signing up on the petition. We were not successful the first time we had opponents to the idea and uh, we were successful four years later. And I really hope that that helps this, this uh, endeavor of Mr. Lubert, because I think uh, you probably wouldn't be looking for this site if it were dry. <laughs> um, so that brings me to another thing. I grew up with a, um, a friend of mine whose family owned a dinner restaurant in Pittsburgh called the Holiday House. And having traveled around and seen other casinos, I think we could use a facility like that. I'm asking uh, you guys to consider expanding your restaurant idea and having entertainment there. Because really there, there is nothing between Monroeville and Harrisburg that's of any consequence as far as a dinner club is concerned. Um, so that's uh, one idea. Um, the, the idea of passing this, I think, is, is uh, pretty obvious. It looks to me like it'll pass. Uh, I would add one thing into this. Right now, we have a, a severe problem with students who owe or people who were students and they owe tremendous uh, money, student debt. Um, I talked to a young fellow the other day um, who is having a hard time getting a job as a, uh, uh, a draftsman. And um, he's got $60,000 in private loans. The, cap the idea of being able to uh, make that money up and pay off that loan is slim. But with some of the profits that you generate, I could see that you could direct some of your profits toward such things, considering that that would be for the community good. Um, another item that I noticed in your discussions today was parking. Macy's was always busy, you know, during the holiday seasons and uh, the parking lot was filled. I anticipate that you will not have enough parking unless you're walking to the other end of the mall. But the managers of Macy's, who I knew, often complained about the lack of parking and how they were shot down by our local government in adding a second story deck. I would promote the second story deck to you folks so that you do have enough parking. Thank you, good luck. Mr. Vernon, uh, thank you for mentioning Monroeville. I know I don't look that old, but uh, about 25 years ago, I was the mayor in Monroeville. Wow. I remember the Holiday House fondly and you don't know how many times we get calls uh, to try to bring back something uh, like the Holiday House. So. Uh, Mr. Luber, we have great pictures and, and uh, 
uh, great memories of the Holiday House in Monroeville. So anytime you want to try to replicate it, we're happy to <laughs> thank you for the shout out for Monroeville. Oh, oh I, I always love Monroeville and I traveled to that uh, that restaurant many times on a Friday night. It yep. kept us 10 year old and boys <laughs> out of trouble. I saw the three stooges there. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Michael Lee. I'm not sure that I saw Michael Lee, but I'll speak for him for one minute. He's not uh, able to be here, but he has sent in a written statement. Okay, thank you. That is the end of the list of individuals I had registered. Is anyone here thought they registered or tried to register? Raise your hand. I see, I think one hand. Yes. You come forward, sir. I talked to you. I was on the okay, then I, I'm, I apologize. Come on up. Yeah. And uh, if you could raise your right hand and be sworn by the court reporter. I do. And and could you tell us your name and yes. spell it? Thank you first to the board for arranging this and to the developers for sharing their information. I am Carl Hill of Benner Township. Uh, I am a retired United Methodist pastor having served in the center region, three different congregations over the years, two of which are within easy geographical proximity to the proposed uh, venue for the casino. One is the Pleasant Gap United Methodist Church, and the other is the Mount Nittany United Methodist Church in Lamont, which is just down the road. Um, I, I want to share from two perspectives, First of all, some of the personal things that I have, and I, I do not represent those congregations in anything that they've said, but I do want to share my some personal questions and thoughts. Plus, I would like to share the statement of the United Methodist Church uh, from a denominational standpoint. Our general conference, which is meets every four years and is over 1,000 delegates is the only group that can speak officially for the denomination. And this is a statement from 2016. We did not meet in 2020 because of the COVID. And I share this with you. Gambling is a menace to society, deadly to the best interests of moral, social, economic, and spiritual life destructive of good government and good stewardship as an act of faith and concern. Christians should abstain from gambling and should strive to minister to those victimized by the practice. Where gambling has become addictive, the church will encourage such individuals to receive therapeutic assistance so that the individual's energies may be redirected into positive and constructive ends. The supporting American Indian tribe sovereignty and self-determination uh, seems to be a dichotomy sometimes with the church's position. Therefore, the church's role is to create sacred space to allow for dialogue and education that will promote a holistic understanding of the American Indian's historic quest for survival. And it would make it unnecessary and undesirable to resort to commercial gambling including public lotteries, casinos, raffles, inter internet gambling, gambling with an emerging wireless technology and other games of chance as a recreation, as an escape, or as a means of producing public revenue of funds for support of charities or government. my comments and questions, and some of them have been answered. Thank you to the developers for sharing a good presentation. Um, 
I have a question, uh, and that was alluded to by the parking. I have experienced over the years that I lived here in this area, uh, holidays, give us uh, Black Friday, give us the Christmas season, and you could never find a place to park at the Nittany Mall. If we already have three flagship um, stores that have come into the mall and that this project will attract other stores to fill the vacancies that are there, and then we have the casino, I'm not sure that they answered adequately as to the, the parking situation. I have a concern and it was addressed partly about the uh, feasibility, uh, the financial feasibility. Uh, we, I have not seen or have not heard specifics, but what are the positive and negative financial impacts upon College Township, uh, Center County and the state of Pennsylvania in relationship to this project? Um, I realize it's, uh, uh, projected venture that will take place at Macy's. I, I realize that the Nittany Mall is not really a large complex. It's a small area. And if we have three flagship stores there now, add the casino and get more um, other stores to come in, there are going to be people of all ages within a very, very close proximity to the casino. Other casinos that I'm aware of are not, well, I don't know about the one at Valley Forge, I heard, but other casinos that I've seen, heard of, they are not in close proximity to children and to youth and to adults altogether. So that's a concern that I have. Um, I realize that since the state of Pennsylvania got involved in the red lights coming on uh, quickly, uh, that since they've become involved in uh, kind of certifying gambling, they've, uh, uh, we've proliferated the number of children and youth that are involved in lotteries to support youth organizations, sports organizations. And I find this to be very, very difficult. Um, like I said, you've answered some of my questions. I appreciate the time. I don't, I'm not a, I don't want to be a hypocrite and pretend I've never been in a casino. I have been. <laughs> I've won a couple dollars. And I, I feel I have mixed emotions. I appreciate what I've heard from both sides. Thank you for being here. Thank you to the developers and Madam Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so now I'm at the end of my list. Is there anyone else here who thought they registered to speak? Raise your hand. Um, and any speaker today, if, if you have comments that you, you didn't get to share with us, if you'd like to um, send them to the board clerk email, which is board clerk, all one word, B-O-A-R-D-C-L-E-R-K at P-A dot G-O-V. And you can find us on the website at the Gaming Control Board's um, website. You can certainly email comments to us. And speaking of written comments, um, I have provided, I think there's about, four, we've received about 49 written comments through our uh, website and through the board clerk email prior to the hearing, been provided to um, SC Gaming um, Council and they will be added to the record as hearing exhibit number one. And they will also be posted to the board's website with all the other information um, concerning this project for the public to um, also see and read. So the matter, uh, the record in this matter will remain open. The transcript from today's hearing, as well as all the written comments received by the deadline will be provided to all board members for their consideration. And the board at its convenience will schedule this matter to be heard at a future board meeting in Harrisburg um, for uh, presentation and vote on, on SC Gaming's application. I wanna thank the staff here at the Penn Stater for their help, um, arranging the room uh, and, and holding this hearing today. Thank you all for coming and attending and for your cooperation. And the hearing is now adjourned. Thank you.